If you work in sales, particularly software sales like me, you should find today's video relevant. A question I've been getting a lot recently is, Trent, talk about how you build value in your deals. How do you do discovery? It's such an important topic. I spend a lot of my own self-development time thinking about discovery questions, how to build value, how to flow in conversations, and at the top of my cheat sheet right here, effective discovery is key to winning sales. As soon as I realized that sales wasn't just a communication game, it wasn't just, hey, let's talk about the weather, it isn't all about rapport, it's about how can you understand what that prospect, buyer, customer cares about, what's in it for them, why does it matter to their business, and how can you clearly and succinctly articulate how your solution is going to help them reach that desired state. Ultimately, your win rate will go up as well. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the framework I use to work deals and share a lot of the actual questions I use day in and day out in my account executive role. I've closed over $300,000 in ARR, annual recurring revenue this year in 2021. As a rampy account executive, I by no means have all the answers, but I'm in the trenches each and every day. I'm not here to sell you anything. I just wanna talk about my experience and hopefully find some value and you come away with a question or two or a better understanding of how do you develop your sales skills to do more effective discovery. If you're in sales or looking to get in sales, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Now, the sales framework I use for discovery in my software sales job is called Command of the Message. We're trying to understand the before scenario, the negative consequences of that existing state, the future state, what do they wanna have happen, and ultimately the positive outcomes as a result of that future state. A part of that as well is required capabilities, so specific technical features, and then of course, budget, timeline, compelling event. What I wanna start with is compelling event because this is the most important part in my opinion and where deals are won and lost. When we think about compelling event, it's why now? Always ask that question, ask yourself that question, ask the prospect that question, why now? What prompted you to take our call here today? When do you hope to have this completed by? If they don't have any sort of ideal timeline or what they're trying to achieve, that means there's a latent pain, which means that you're gonna have a major uphill battle trying to build value here. You need to be very concrete with what are we working towards and why does it matter right now? That's the number one tip. The next tip is before you ever have an initial meeting, that's typically when we start to use discovery, when you have that initial meeting or perhaps it's a second and third meeting, always ask yourself, who are you actually meeting with? Are you meeting with a manager? Are you meeting with a director? Are you meeting with a VP? Are you meeting with a C-level? And when I say, who are you meeting with? It's what level are they at the organization? How much clout do they have? This is a mistake I've learned time and time again, losing deals because when we meet with an initial prospect, we think of them as a champion. We say, oh, they're gonna be able to sell my product or service internally in the organization until you realize that they're a low level manager with absolutely no buying power, no influence, and although they're telling you, hey, we're gonna get this done, when they go to their VP, the VP doesn't even give them the time of the day. So make sure before you even think about what questions to ask, you always need to understand why now, what has led you to this point to think about this today, and who are we speaking with? If we're speaking with someone low level, we need to be thinking, how can I elevate the conversation? So some of the questions I'm gonna cover on the sheet may not be applicable to a low level person because they're not gonna necessarily understand why this matters to the business, they're only gonna care about how does this help them in their role. So that's a really important note. The first discovery question, which is a bonus question, is if you haven't liked the video, go ahead and drop a like now. I would really appreciate it. It helps the channel immensely. When we think about the command and message framework, we're starting with before scenario. We're trying to understand what is the existing state today? So think about your product, service, or solution and think about the competitors you may come up against. Most likely that organization is using a competitor or doing nothing. So how are you capturing XYZ feedback today? How are you measuring the impact of IT spend? How are you measuring the impact of SEO optimization on your business, whatever it may be? And say, what's working well? What's not working well? What would you change about that? As a result of your XYZ program process efforts, what outcomes have been made possible in your business? You wanna understand the before scenario, so what are they doing today? 
How is it working? The next box here is negative consequences, emphasis, drill into the pain. What you're doing on an initial meeting is qualifying the pain. And if there's nothing wrong with what they're doing today, then why are you talking in the first place? You want to look for these red flags and disqualify them because not all prospects and meetings are created equally. You don't want to waste your time on people that have no need, have no pain. A lot of people want to talk just to talk. And what I've realized as I've grown as a rep is that I can't be wasting time speaking with people that don't have a problem or don't have anything I can't help them solve. And when we think about negative consequences and drilling into the pain, the emphasis is why does any of this matter? I say to the prospect, why does this matter? Why now? That goes back into the compelling event as well. And what happens if you don't address XYZ problem? Why do you know that this is even a problem? You're really just trying to get into the pain and why does this matter to the business? And if you can quantify it in the form of a metric, all the better as well. Once we understand what's going on and why it's not working and why it matters, we need to then get into the future state. What are your goals with running a program like this? In an ideal world, what would your XYZ program look like? Why would this be an ideal scenario? It's really important to ask second and third layer questions in sales. This is a big area of opportunity for most reps is the prospect says, yeah, well, we have strategic goals this year that we're working on. Okay, what are your strategic goals? Well, our strategic goals are to increase our digital marketing presence. Okay, you mentioned digital marketing presence. Tell me why that matters. What are you trying to improve? Ask second and third layer questions. A lot of people, it doesn't come naturally, so you really need to condition yourself to be curious and inquisitive so you can get more information and build value. Building on the future state, what will you measure to determine if a program like this will be effective or not? What, who, other teams will be impacted by this? Start to understand how can you multi-thread and loop in other people in the conversation. Once we understand the future state, what they're trying to accomplish, you then get into the positive business outcomes. The only reason a business is going to spend with you is because you're going to help them reduce cost, increase revenue, or mitigate risk. So you need to be aware of what are the value drivers and what does positive success looks like. Ultimately, what would the broader business impact of a program like this be? Okay. If this solution only solved for your XYZ pain, would you be able to justify spend to move forward? What else would you need? What else do you need to solve? Ultimately, reduce cost, increase revenue, mitigate risk. And then finally, the last two boxes, we're gonna, we're gonna go freestyle a little bit here, are required capabilities. What are the key capabilities this solution must have? You never wanna get too technical, you never wanna get too feature heavy. Oh, we have real-time insights, we have AI, we have machine learning. When you start using words like that, that's not really, what we're here to do. We're here to paint a vision and to talk about why this matters to their business. Why are we doing it now? Drive urgency. Make sure you're speaking with the right people who can actually buy. What do you, what is your budget for this project? A lot of people never, they never tell me the budget. So not necessarily the best question to have, but hey, is this a top down initiative or do you recognize there's a problem and you're trying to drive urgency? If it's top down, oh, our board said we have to start doing XYZ process. Okay, that's how you know it's important, it's an initiative, you know that they're gonna have money to spend it. Whereas if this frontline director just thinks it's important, they'll have to build a business case, then that's a whole different battle you're gonna to have to face trying to drive urgency in the organization. Ultimately, there's a lot of nuance here. I can make a video on each of these different stages, before scenario, negative consequences, future state, positive business outcomes, required capabilities, budget, timeline, compelling event. There's a lot to know and you're not gonna absorb it overnight. So by watching this video, write down one or two learnings you had. Make sure to comment down below for the algorithm. Maybe even share what your learning was or what you thought in the comments below. And just know that it's a continuous process. I've had this sheet in front of me for weeks, if not months, and I've made multiple sheets like it because I learned by writing things down. So ask yourself, how do you learn? Start doing that and figure out how can you close the gap between where you're at today and where you wanna go. It's a skill gap. The more knowledge you can get, the more you can refine your talent, 
ultimately the better outcomes you're gonna deliver and you're gonna make more money, get more promotions, become more successful. That's what I'm trying to do and I hope you can do the same. So thanks so much for watching this video. Leave a like if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, comment down below for the algorithm and if you wanna connect on LinkedIn, go and shoot me a request now and I'll talk to you there. See you guys, bye.